The Dow and S&P 500 rising Wednesday after losing ground in six of the last seven sessions. NASDAQ turning up too. Well, let's get a market read from Liz Miller. She's president of Summit Place Financial Advisors joining us today from New York City. Welcome back, Liz. Thank you. Well, Liz, uh, third quarter earnings are just a few weeks away. Some earnings estimates have started to come down. What are you anticipating in terms of the corporate report card and how might that affect the market momentum that seems to be waning recently? Well, we, we're really in some ways still just coming off the final reports from second quarter. And remember, that was the one that really had a comparison to the economy just stopping on a dime. So we knew those were going to be really strong reports. And truthfully, we expect Q3 this upcoming quarter to be an equally strong comparison. Activity was very weak last year. But what we're seeing in the market from investors clearly is a bit of a fear of these numbers because of the resurgence of COVID-19 and the Delta variant. Um, we're looking almost more at the day-to-day -day economic data for that information. But so far, there isn't a lot of evidence that activity has slowed dramatically. So I think we're going to see a strong third quarter. I think it's going to be surprisingly strong. But investors still may be focused on the here and now, what we see each day, rather than those good results when they're reported. All right, so you're expecting strong results on the corporate front. What about economic activity, which seems to be slowing? Just today we got manufacturing production numbers that rose, but growth was slowing. And earlier we got consumer prices that were slowing. Right. The consumer price was a surprise, and it'll be interesting to see how that might be adjusted next month. We always want to be careful. Uh, it's tough to put all this data together. And sometimes if it's too surprising, we will look and wait a month to see how it gets revised. Uh, but we do know that there are supply chain issues. We, are, we will continue to see that in the CPI numbers. The surprise of today was the New York Fed Empire report, and really that's what turned the markets today. Surprisingly strong reading at 34 versus 18. Those numbers don't always mean a lot to people, but it is an expanding um, manufacturing area. The Empire report covers our whole Northeast region here, and it definitely showed more strength than expected. We often look to the Empire report as a signal that will eventually flow through the whole economy for the U.S., so that report today, a little bit in contrast to those other numbers, and hopefully a sign of something stronger as we move forward. All right, so Liz, Liz so let's put the uh, economic outlook and the earnings outlook together. There's also the Fed to worry about, but uh, what does it mean in terms of uh, where stocks will be headed right at a time when we're in September, traditionally a tough month for stocks? And stocks did have a bit of a tough September. We really saw a lot of consolidation, as we like to say, the beginning of the month and through much of the month. Uh, today, looking positive and being the first positive session in a number. This market has been so strong coming off the bottom all the way back to 2020. So we expected this year to have the rotation that we've seen a number of high flyers from 2020 somewhat going sideways this year or lagging. We saw a slow summer with everything consolidating. We made it through August. I really thought August might have been that correction month. We've seen that before. Um, everywhere you look, there is a strategist saying they wouldn't be surprised at a correction. I think where we stand today is still a little bit of we wouldn't be surprised at a pullback. But the numbers we're seeing coming out of the economic data and the likelihood of a good Q3 may just bring us into a flat October and not a dangerous October. So should or is there a need for investors to hedge their portfolios right now, given the huge gains we've had through the summer? We've certainly been taking profits in some really oversized positions, and we would suggest anyone do that, not because we don't think they're great long-term investments, but because at a certain point, you do want to be banking those profits. And as we said, at any moment, you could easily get a 10% correction, and it would not be surprising to have something a little stronger given the run in this market. So we'd rather bank a little bit of the profit and be ready to go back in at better prices. Okay. Uh, ammo, in case you need it. Thanks a lot, Liz. Thanks. Our thanks to Liz Miller of Summit Place Financial. I'm Fred Katayama in New York. This is Roy.